Hey everybody, welcome back to an episode of From the Music Store. This is Jason and I'm here with, in person actually again, it's been a couple weeks with my good friend cohort, Mr. Jeremy Renner. Hello. And we've got Lo-Fi Brad. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Lo-Fi Brad. Yeah, here. Lo-Fi Brad. So Brad works with us here at the store. I think, Brad, you were on one sh- episode before, weren't you? Yeah, I came in at the end of one episode. I yeah, he came we in. Talked to, I think I had just put a single out or something. We bring Brad on when we need to amp up the energy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everybody's having a great summer. Uh, I had a fun interview last night with our my neighbor, Wally, our, your, oh. your previous student. That's right. Of t- two Twice removed. Yes. Yeah. We uh, talked about creating playlists and soundtracking your life and all the tunes and festivals he went to. That's a fun, uh, fun listen. We are back in person. It's been uh, a little bit uh, of a crazy time of the year. Full on gigging. Uh, Brad is uh, on in gigging mode. Jeremy has been doing <laughs> nonstop gigs. That's right. You, 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 did you get your 20 minute window to mow your lawn yesterday? I did. I mowed it between the hours of 8 and 9 o'clock at night. I bet your neighbors love that. I get, it's like with my power washer. I get weird like when, like what time in the morning is acceptable to start the power washer up? Well, only because I, I've done work in the past and I know what time I need to show up for the construction slash uh, hardscaping work and the landscaping work to be done. It's, I think it's like 8 o'clock. That's the legal. There is a legal... Yeah. W- yeah. So Brad... Uh, has busked before. We were talking about busking, which is the oh. the sort of uh, random performance of live music for tips and money within a public environment. So, Brad, what is the earliest hour one should be allowed to start busking? If I woke up and, I, like, Brad was out front of my house, like, busking at, like, 8 a.m., would I be like, dude, shut up? Like, what's, oh, what's saying... the appropriate busking time? Yeah, so Jeremy says it's legal to start sl- swinging a hammer at 8 a.m., I mean, Where does busking I think Brad start? Appropriate is around lunchtime. I, I can see people getting aggravated, maybe at breakfast, but if you're playing nice enough music around brunch time, you'd be okay. So maybe the ten, eleven a.m. Where were you busking? Uh, in Ocean City, I used to on the boardwalk. Brad oh, would go yeah, out to the yeah, boardwalk yeah, yeah. and like just did you did you do the open guitar case or did you put the hat? I tried all kinds of different. What's the most effective setups? way to get money from people? Definitely the guitar case because you can see it from a distance. And then if the wind was blowing, I'd throw the tip jar in the case and just hope that nobody ran away with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bust. I bust in New York City. Oh, you really? bust in the city on the on the on the, yeah I went to the subway. Now that one you technically need to have the permit for I think right. There's a, some group that like hands out now the permits. Well, for Well, we that. just went and did it, but all the good spots were taken. So we went to the we went to the like the uh, the newbies, which is basically where a, the platform is in the middle. You have two trains on either side of you, so you really have a small window to get your tunes going before the train comes in and makes too much noise. I had like a I had like a dollar bill hanging out of the pocket of my shirt. People okay. were shoving money in my shirt. Somebody would come up and shove money in your shirt? Like in, in my shirt pocket. Like I wore a button down and had a yeah. front pocket. People would just kind of put the money right there. So that was... It's like an on-person tip jar. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It I'm was like good. Interested. I don't know how I feel about strangers on the subway just touching me in general. I feel like I would... Well, I really getting, when it comes to getting paid, yeah, they're getting they're money. what you got to do. Yeah. So you, what you're saying, Brad, is you have a thing where it's okay to touch you if you're getting paid. You know, I'd there say, is a, a, there's a term for that job. <laughs> I'd say I'd be... I'd be more open to the idea of you're paying me, for sure. Yeah, yeah just, for, just for her, your, yeah. where your sunglasses are. If I'd somebody probably... came up to me and just touched me and didn't give me any money, I'd be kind of upset, but okay, if they're paying me. I said, hey, this ride free. Money. He was busking oh, yeah. on the boardwalk in Ocean City, and it, I guess at one point they were one of the only beach towns that allowed people to actually get out and busk, play for money in public places. And it was, at one. how much was it? It was originally $50, you told yeah, me? Yeah, during the season, it was $50 when I used to do it. And now it's going up to? They, so I got the email in the spring or in the winter saying, we're going to raise it to $200. It has to get voted on. Oh, um, $200. Bucks. I mean, that's, real, that's I just, real money. I just stopped. I was like, it's not worth it for me to pay $200. When I get it for free in the off season, you so. might not make two hundred dollars back. Correct. But yeah. I wonder what the impetus is to sit there and charge someone a ton of money. I guess that keeps like the people who are like either horrible or crazy off the boardwalk. I think so. Yeah. I think that's. I think they try and push them to AC. Is my thinking because yeah. you can busk in AC for no money at all. Okay. So. Oh, so it's kind of like the musical version of why we have beach badges. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're trying to keep the riffraff off the board. Wall. Right. It's not yeah. that they're sitting there going, "We need our cut." It's that a crazy, some crazy guy who owns a guitar or a, an ocarina is not going to come up there and just yeah, be you know, harassing families, yeah. children. Yeah. What do you, What do you think the the hourly rate for busking should be? Like, so you were doing it, and oh, I'm not, and I'm not like, good and I'm not saying it. like you're yeah. not like an expert at it, but like if I was going to play out in public. But do you feel like you should get at least minimum wage per hour to make it worth your while? That's how I felt. I felt like if I wasn't making fifteen dollars within the hour, I was doing something wrong, because that Ru- felt like, just, like or, or sucking. Yeah, or just like I was wasting my time, you know, because yeah. I, I could be doing something else for minimum wage. But I mean, it's free setup. I mean, in the off season, free setup wasn't cost me any money. So yeah, I felt like fifteen dollars an hour. Was was solid. But do you think, it, though, if you had ponied up the 200 bucks, you'd be crushing it in the summer because it's just packed over there? It's possible. Um, I just never really did. I made more money there in the off season than I yeah. did during the summer. It just gets so crowded in the summer, you can't hear anything. Okay, well, Brad had a better gig yesterday. He, oh, yeah. Yeah. Private had, party. Yeah. Here we have like people that had a backyard barbecue party, but they had live, they hired somebody to come and play music. I think that's really cool, right? Most people go out to restaurants and that's their exposure to seeing live music that they don't, you know, buy a ticket for a concert or whatever. Uh, but I think it's cool that, like, people say, we're going to have a party and just part of our party, along with the ribs and the beer and everything, is we're going to have some guy playing live music. I think that's cool. I think people should do more of that. I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan. No, just the concept of, like, oh, no, it's you know, you could, yeah. they could just put music on. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's, it's everyone I ever do, every private party I've ever done, everybody there is so amped that there's a band like because well, i only do band live parties oh so, so you wouldn't do a backyard barbecue solo jeremy renner uh, yeah i've done them once or twice and i don't like to do it i'd rather do my band so yeah. usually it's a, a larger event so i've done block parties i've done larger backyard parties like you know someone who has a pretty good sized piece of property and they're always just such a hoot and all the people really really dig it they're always just like this is great people start dancing it's so much more relaxed and comfortable because they know they're not spending tons of money on on on, on drinks and food and stuff like that. They're just there yeah. to have a good time. Mm-hmm. So everyone's already in a really good mood because they're there for a free event. They're not going to a bar or a restaurant. Yeah. I, my bass player always shot. He always puts a really good spin on it because sometimes it's like, you know, you go from. I do gigs where we play like a twenty five hundred seat theater. I was I was just this past April did a great huge theater out there in Arizona like. 2,000 seats or something like that and then you're playing a backyard party it's like ooh you gotta watch out don't trip over the extension cord everybody yeah. so it's like a real big it's just such a huge you know juxtaposition from gig to gig but what's he, he my bass player puts a good silver lining he's like you know I bet we're the only band playing band on the run right now in this <laughs> entire nobody else at 10, 15 at night is playing not even Paul McCartney is playing band on the run. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's wings right. technically, right? Yeah, wings. Yeah, but you, yeah, I'm like you're probably right. My uh, my mother in law stays with us in the summertime, and she's huge help and helps the kids and everything. But she has this thing where, like, in the morning, as soon as she wakes up, like when I'm still like halfway through my cup of coffee, just trying to get my head about me, like she just immediately puts on like the NBC or CBS morning shows. But they had a preview of a clip with Billy Joel. Okay. But he was talking about, like, I guess it like, came in at the end, but something about his, his run. He's like, you're at Madison Square Garden, playing in, 20, in front of 20,000 people. You're God. And then the show's over. You go outside. You get in your car. And you're another schmuck stuck in traffic. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's playing in the garden. He lives out in Long Island, yeah. you know? Yeah. Just want to get home. But I always, I, I always said that it, in, in the world of music, like, I wanted to be grocery store famous. Which basically meant that I could go to a grocery store, nobody would know anything about who I am or whatever, and I could just, you know, I could wait at the deli counter just like everybody else. Just from the cruise work stuff, just when it's, you know, you're on a floating city, basically, um, it was tough because people would assume, and and the cruise kind of, this is unspoken, but they basically... Because you had guest status and you can go about the ship and you're eating at the Lido deck with everybody else, the guest entertainers, they kind of encourage you to be out a little bit if you could because it's it's just 
it makes for good uh, a good review of a, a person's trip. And the guest entertainers are great, and they were hanging oh, with people. Course, yeah. So yeah, but you, but you, but you don't work at Disney World. I mean, I'm, and I'm saying yeah. you should because you're like a good human being, and you should do that. But but that's like they're not paying you extra to no, do marketing for the cruise ship. They're not, and, and, and I think, you, you know, I'm here to eat my sandwich, or I'm here to eat my oh well, there was unlimited a, buffet. I'm there. It was after a show, and God bless this guy. But he came up to me, you know, if he if he happens to listen to the show, you were great. I didn't I didn't mind you. But this guy came up to me. It's like eleven forty five at night, before, right before they shut the kitchen down. So I'm trying to get my last meal to the show. I, I think you told this story. Did I? Yeah, I got on the Todd episode. By the way, if you want to know more about the cruise ship kind of hijinks That's in right, music yeah. life, we have a previous episode with Todd Meredith. Well, I'll retell it very quickly. A guy came up to me, and he was an amateur photographer. I'm an amateur photographer. <laughs> okay, and he showed me. A couple, uh, almost a thousand yeah. pictures, but he had something to say about almost all of them. And I just sat there and munched, and he showed me <laughs> Brad's laughing. every piece, like, look at this. And yeah. he just, it's like a picture of leaves. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is great, bro. I'm, uh, this is really great. I'm showing my food. It could be worse. He could have sat down to you and said, guess what? I'm a proctologist. Right. <laughs> What about you, Brad? When you do the busking thing, did you ever just get some like crazies or people just get up all in your business? Yeah, usually it's minors, I would say, like groups of minors. Oh, they like they're just like let's. Mu- this guy can't do anything. He's stuck there with a guitar. Let's yes, go monkey with him. Correct. They're anybody like, ever okay, to, this guy. Did they, did they try to steal the money out of the guitar? No, keys? nobody ever tried to take the money. Um, luckily, I mean, I, I'm sure it's happened before. It's never happened to me. But yeah, the minors are the biggest issue. They'd come up to you with their cell phones and they'd be trying to film some kind of a video, like a TikTok or something. And you just assume they're trying to mess with you, so you just try and like you know stay calm and just pretend like you know yeah you are oblivious to everything they're saying, even though you know they're trying to set you up for. Something. Well, what do they think you're that guy at the, in the UK that stands up? You know that soldier guy that has to stand there yeah. and can't, doesn't make a face and yeah, people monkey true. with him. Like, that guy's realize, got the worst like, gig. Like you... I'll literally stand up and leave. Like I nobody's paying me to be here, so I could just get oh, up. You know, like I, I don't song. care that that's much. It. Yeah. yeah. Kid, you ruined it for me. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, everybody was pretty okay, I would say. I, nothing nothing I can remember, but I remember specifically groups of minors being an issue. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, just to transition a little Dark bit. Dark kids. Mm. Yeah. So, Sounds of Summer. I think we're going to do like a, an episode coming up about some of the summer hits and stuff like we did last year. Mm. But, uh, Brad, this is dear to your heart. So, one of the things that oh, I was boy. thinking is the Sound of Summer, right, is the ukulele. Oh, okay. I feel like that's like a fun, uh, I'm going to kind of pitch an instrument. Like, I think the ukulele is a great summertime instrument. It's a great instrument in general. A few little tidbits about the ukulele that most people don't know. You know where the ukulele came from? I mean, well, the obvious answer is Hawaii, but it's probably right. not. Well, it's it technically it is, but it is not a Hawaiian instrument. Is it Peruvian? No, it's actually a uh, Portuguese in the 1800s. I guess the, the height of like sailing ships, people from workers from all over the world would end up in different places. But some Portuguese cabinet makers had ended up in Hawaii and they set up like shop there. But one of the things they started doing was recreating Portuguese instruments while that they were there, I guess, using, I'm assuming it must have been like koa wood or whatever. I, that I don't know the answer to. But the, I guess there's a Portuguese instrument called the machete cavaquino and some other words I can't pronounce. But anyway, they were making these instruments and playing them on the streets, kind of like busking. And everybody's like, whoa, these things are really cool. What's going on? So the king uh, in of Hawaii was like, this is totally awesome. I love it. King Kalakaua, this is the best way I'm going to say it, uh, became like a huge patron of it. And it got integrated into Hawaiian uh, royal cultural uh, events and music and they, he really actually like pushed that instrument. It was really cool. And that was all the way back in like 1879, 1880. Mm. And the word ukulele actually translates to jumping flea. And there's some discrepancy over like where that came from. Some people think about some of the players at the time were really good. They had these little nimble fingers and they were rocking the ukulele. Mm. And they think that's maybe where the name comes from. Did you know that the Beatles were huge fans of that instrument? Yes. Oh hell! Uh, yeah, George Harrison wrote "Here Comes the Sun" on the on the uke. He did. He, you know, he was known to actually just show up at people's houses and gift them ukuleles. Like when you know you go, like when my parents were younger, you go to somebody's house, you'd bring like a bottle of wine or flour. You always brought something, and George Harrison was like notorious for that. He would huh. like 
to Eric Clapton and Tom Petty, he'd bring over like ukuleles. And I guess I think he taught Tom Petty how to play it. And they were huge mm-hmm. fans of this guy. I was playing it downstairs because I was trying to remember some of his tunes. Um, George Formby, who was a, a British singer, playing like basically 1930s sort of Mer- like not American standard stuff, but like what you think of like those sort of jazzy mm-hmm. kind of fun tunes in that area that the Beatles grew up on. And I didn't realize what a impact it had made on them until I started listening to some of the standards records that Paul McCartney recorded that are all full of these songs that are from like mm. the 1930s and 1940s. And he did this version of the song, Paper Moon. I think we had talked about it once before, but he's so relaxed and natural about it. And he's such an amazing artist anyway. But you could tell by listening to it, there was like a deeper history there. Like he had grown up with these songs. Um, and I thought it was is, is really interesting that how bands that we think are one thing can be still influenced and interested in other forms of music. So that was cool. But yes, ukulele, I think everybody should have a ukulele. They're easy to play, they're fun to play, and they are not secondary to guitars. I've been telling people that. I find I have to ch- explain to people the purpose of a ukulele. Oh, just look no further than, uh, what's his, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, Jake... Shimbukuru. Oh yes, he's he's phenomenal. He yeah. was jamming with Tommy Emmanuel. They were doing they were doing. Oddly enough, here we go. This is six degrees of separation. He and Tommy Emmanuel were doing the George Harrison, although it is a Beatles tune. Uh, While my guitar gently weeps as a duet. Oh really? And the two of them. Yeah, it's fantastic. So people should check it is, out. Is it on the YouTube's? It is, and they did it on. Oh, here we go. Another 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 point. They did it. On a morning talk show. They did, oh, on a morning talk show, really? So those two had to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. That like, why can't we need you to studio at like 4.30? Uh-huh. It just, just go ahead and make it 4.25 if you could. Uh, you yeah. know? No, no. <laughs> be ready to play at your best. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a late-night kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I used to be. That kids, kids have ruined that a little bit for me. You know how we were playing around with the AI apps? Yeah. They, there's now a like all of a sudden I think last week everybody got together and is basically suing them all the labels they are uh, getting sued by it's like and they went and hired like this high high powered lawyers that are gonna like kind of duke it out so this is the beginning of the fight over how these AI generated songs now who are, are we going now who are we going after the people that wrote the algorithms and, the, and designed it or are we going after AI itself well. I mean, there's always, I'm not a lawyer, but there's always a, it's, I think it's called precedence, right? Mm-hmm. Where there's like a case. Yeah, court precedence, yeah. Yes, and they like, no, you can't do that. So um, it says, the lawsuit cites circumstantial evidence to support the label's belief that their copyrighted material has been used by Suno and Udio in AI training. This includes generated songs by Suno and Udio that sound just like Springsteen, Michael Jackson, ABBA, and so on. But it's pulling it's pulling from everything though to generate its its music. So is it do you do you are they suing them because of how they design the algorithm to work and how it finds its information to make something or is it the thing that is made itself? Well, there uh, that's where I think the argument's going to come because the they want to know if any of that their music was used in the quote unquote like learning process, right? But Brad and I just had a conversation where, like, you know, Sam Smith did that. People do this. People yeah. rip off stuff. Like, yeah. Sam Smith ripped off, and br- Brad brought that up. And I was like, yeah, totally right. And he had to he had to pay up. And what did you say he was, his excuse was... Yeah, they said they didn't know who Tom Petty was. They're like, Tom Petty? I haven't heard of him. He, yeah, like, that's we definitely going to say baloney on that one. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that's how I feel about this whole thing. I'm like, if they're going to go after AI, they should go after people first who have been doing this... For, and it seems to be happening more frequently as far as I'm aware. Like, it's become, like, outrageous now. Songs just being completely ripped off. And now the thinking is... So it used to be, like, you know, you'd ask somebody permission first, and then you'd put the song out. But now they're just asking permission after they get caught. And then they're, you know, they're paying people back for the money. <laughs> so that's kind of become the well the process. We had an episode like, about this. Yeah, because oh, okay. there's no... There's no. It was it was Ed Sheeran and um, the, uh, the Marvin Gaye and yeah. um, so uh, you, I talked to that lawyer once in person. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah wow. the guy who did that case. Yeah. The thing is, you listen to it; it's the same thing. In fact, 
I was, I think I said this on the episode, I was in Applebee's and I don't know most Ed Sheeran songs from a, from, you know, from a Britney Spears song, I suppose. So I don't know what it is. And I'm just listening to it. And I go, oh my goodness, listen to this. And my wife's looking at me. She's like, what is it? She goes, I don't know this song. I go, no, listen. And I'm like, let's get it on. She's like, oh my gosh, it is. I'm like, I yeah. don't know who this. So I hold my phone up. I ask Siri to tell me who this is. It tells me it said Sheeran. This was before I even knew that there was a case against him. Sure, that song could have been AI generated. And I mean, not that it was, but right. you, we know there's no bad press now. No matter what, it doesn't really matter. They, Like you said, they can yep. pay the money back. But either way, the song is now even more popular because of yeah. everyone has to listen to it to find out how similar it is. So, you know, like we're like doing work on our house to move from point A to point B. So we're moving to a new house. And that's doing construction, have to do permits and all that stuff. There is a saying in the remodeling world that it's better to ask for forgiveness sure. than permission. Right. <laughs> so I'm going back to what Brad yeah, was saying. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. Here's a check for twenty million dollars. Yeah. And now, but already it's like, great. I just sold out Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the there's too many there's too many yes men that are sitting around a table who all have to listen to this Ed Sheeran song or any song that sounds like something else. And you mean, like I said before in, in another episode, you mean to tell me nobody went, um, excuse me, who raises their hand and goes, uh, excuse, when in, when in the case of AI? Yeah, I'm so curious to see how this yeah. plays out. And, I, I, and I've been taking the other side of the argument just to make things interesting, but I really don't know what to think. Like, I don't know if it matters who is the one that's actually doing the quote unquote learning in, in creation. If, you know, we all listen to other records and players and musicians, and that's how we emulated and then innovated and all that. So is it because because you're sentient? It gives you the pass that right. it's okay to do that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like, right. you are self-aware, Jeremy. Right. So it's okay for you to rip off and, and you know, you know Tom Petty or whatever. Right, 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 right. I, I, honestly, I don't know the answer. I, I, I know I've almost peed my pants like 20 times coming up with songs with the, uh, the Suno one. And I still think the Brad's Water Bottle song is the, is one of the best. In one of the Rick Beato videos, uh, for all those who don't know, Rick Beato is a great producer, and he has a show where he talks about a lot of the same stuff. But apparently, he was saying that his kids, along with other kids, are able. He'll they'll go, Dad, why are you listening to AI? And they're like, How can you tell I'm doing it? And kid, like for some reason, I think because kids are messing around with AI quite a bit, they can tell it's something in the voice. They can they know it. I heard him say that. I I'm leaning towards clickbait on that. For you him. think so? I think so because it's it's still really obvious. I think it's super obvious when we're listening yeah. to an AI generated tune. I think it's tune. just him kind of stirring okay. the pot. I was like, oh, yeah, good point. And I'm like, wait a minute, Rick. And then I look at like the 25,000 views in the first hour that came out. I was like, I think maybe he's stirring the pot. I here. feel like there's never been a moment that I haven't been able to tell that something is AI. Yeah. It's got to, you, you, you just know it. It's there. I feel like it's just as dramatic with like, say like some kind of production, for example, like you can tell the difference between something is digitally produced versus analog produced. But then beyond that, it's even more obvious you have something that's completely AI produced. Like, I feel like it's not that hard. What I'm saying is it's not that hard to tell when you're listening to something like your your ear or your brain understands the difference, even though you yeah. might not know that you know the difference. To me, it sounds tight and compressed. Yeah, everything has a sound sucked that's up to just, the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like, ee- that's what it sounds yeah, like. It's funny because the they're trying to, there's that, uh, you, you can make the correlation, uh, there's that rule, and I forget what they call it, where animators of uh, computer animated shows and movies, there's like a, a, a ratio to creating something that looks too lifelike, so it has to be just cartoony enough where it makes people feel uncomfortable. So that's why yeah, like, you'll see like bul- bul- bulbous eyes <laughs> uh-huh. on like Disney animated sh- movies and shows and DreamWorks and uh, whoever the other one is. Um, yeah, they have to, you have to do something to separate it, otherwise people really start to feel, so there's, there's probably something there with music that we're, we're, we're crossing that line, but like, why? But the thing is, the whole point of the AI generated music is no, we don't want you to know the line. You know, they oh, yeah. they want it to be blurred. They don't want you to know the line. But the thing is, we're humans are still able to tell. Like, no, yeah. this is not something is amiss. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I, I I'm gonna say that we're gonna get to the point where it's not gonna be. And I think maybe we could do a challenge. This is one of these things that looks good on paper, but I never have the time of day to do it. I keep threatening that I'm gonna AI Brad, and then like 
like get him to like we're gonna do like the ukulele songs but i won't even need him to start recording the ukulele band songs i'll just like use his ai voice but it, an interesting challenge would be like me and brad do do that and then play it for you and then see if you can figure out the real brad and the ai brad I bet you could. Because I, I got you. They got you when they AI'd me on the radio station last year around Christmas. Well, like, that was, almost got you well, on that, that one. Was, that, was, that was just the voice, though. That yeah. was little, but there was something funny about the voice. I'm like, this... So, you played it, and I'm like, as I listened to it, I'm like, something's weird. Something's a little... I don't know. It was, it was just... I don't know. Something about the, yeah. the, your, the sibilance and the way you attacked all the things. I'm like, this doesn't sound like Jason's particular cadence. Yeah. And that's what threw me. All right. Well, something that doesn't sound weird is our show from the music store. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we are real. We are here and talking to you as human beings, expressing our thoughts and feelings on music. That being said, uh, we're going to wrap up our show. I'm going to thank Boardwalk Busking Brad, Triple B. <laughs> oh, the nicknames are just coming. That's right. Yeah. Uh, for, for joining us. Um, it won't be the last time. And then, uh, of course, it's nice to be here with Jeremy uh, in person. He's been so busy. He's really he's in and out gigging. Um, for our local listeners, where can they catch you coming up, Jeremy? Uh, the local listeners, uh, I'm going to be playing at the Lighthouse Tavern in Waretown tonight at eight o'clock, and then uh, so this show airs on Sunday, by the way. Okay, well then, uh, then you <laughs> will be able to back in time. You can travel because back in sure. time. Hey, man, all the music that we make is still wandering in the air somewhere. <laughs> it's going on forever. Oh, no, you turn into uh, that guy. I suppose, uh, I don't even know my schedule. I don't know. I'm around. You'll see me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do people know me. Well, yeah. They know. And, and Brad Wilson music. Yeah, Brad Wilson music on everything. All right. You can find me. I'm running a t-shirt campaign oh, t-shirt that I will campaign. advertise. How do you, what's a t-shirt campaign? So, you know, custom ink, right? You can yeah. order shirts. So I've ordered shirts them before just for like random events and this fun stuff, whatever. So I got a last minute invite to come back out to California to record right. more material. And I was like, well, I need to raise a little bit of extra money for like the flights and all this. So I was like, I don't have time to be shipping people shirts and, you know, oh. placing orders so you can set up basically a GoFundMe, but instead of just getting nothing, people are getting a shirt. Um, so yeah, I'm running a t-shirt campaign that's still live if anybody's interested. That's a, uh, I want to talk about that. That's creative uh, use of the power of the internet to yeah. promote art. Let's talk about that. You've been listening to From the Music Store, and you can find us wherever podcasts are to be found. But also, most importantly, you can go to fromthemusicstore.com and hear this episode and past episodes and also to make sure you listen if you happen to be local on WBNJ 91.9. Yes, Yes. all right. We'll see you out there busking.